Well, hey everybody, and welcome to Collider Video's Deadpool spoiler review, where we are going to talk about Deadpool. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with our spoiler reviews, warning. We're gonna talk about this movie as if you watched it with us, that you were sitting in the theater with us. We are gonna go into everything about the movie. That means spoilers. We're gonna spoil plot, we're gonna spoil characters, we're gonna spoil cameos, we're gonna spoil jokes. So if you have not seen Deadpool yet, and why haven't you seen Deadpool yet, but if you've not seen Deadpool yet, you might wanna just add this video to your watch later list or whatever and then come back. But if you don't care, Go ahead, proceed, but you have been warned. Joining me for this spoilers review, sitting over there in the end, is Mr. Dennis Zen. Dennis, how you doing? Doing great. I'm, I'm excited about talking about X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right? <laughs> Part two. No, no, Dennis, that's not Part this review. Part two. No, it's not, not this review. No, okay. not this review. Sitting right beside me, of course, he's just been crushing my dreams all morning, Mr. Mark Ellis. <laughs> you know, John, when you try to dress like a mercenary, you end up looking like an undercover cop. <laughs> Sitting to my right, Mr. Christian Harloff. You're lucky he's been crushing my dreams for eight years. <laughs> and over on the end, Mr. John Schnepp. So we're talking about Zoolander 2, right, guys? Oh, <laughs> no spoiler review. No spoiler review for Zoolander 2. But we're going to talk all a little bit about spoiled. Deadpool. We're going to talk about things we liked about, things we didn't. You know, some speculation, all that kind of stuff. But let's get going with the things we liked about Deadpool and Dennis let's start with you you watched it with me yeah. as a matter of fact so some of what did you like about Deadpool I mean it's fun it's a blast it's irreverent humor it's it actually plays like it has a, a lot of the soup the normal superhero kind of cliches that you would see but then the way they take it they, they take it in an unconventional direction and you, they deliver it in a way that you're not expecting so all those things that you normally be like oh I've seen that before I've seen that before you don't actually get it. It's, it's done in a funny way. And also, you know, at the heart of it, even though, like, they joked about it and we saw those, like, romantic billboards and, like, Valentine's Day. Right. At its heart, it actually is a romantic movie. I mean, it's a revenge <laughs> there a, movie. There's a core love story there. Yeah, the relationship between uh, Wade Wilson and Vanessa is actually actually engaging. I actually felt for the characters. And, you know, we've always talked about how romantic relationships in, in movies are, or especially in superhero movies, are kind of like paper thin. And, and this one, I felt like they actually had a real connection, even as twisted as it was. And even starting from the opening credits, we had that it kind of just sets the tone, right? With the, all the like, Produced Amazing by opening ass, credits. ass hats, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, directed by a uh, what is it, studio tool oh, or yeah, something right, like right. that. They had like uh, Ryan Reynolds, like a... Uh, on the was, cover of Sexiest Man Alive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I forgot. Is that the same part where they had the, the toy of the, the X-Men Origins Wolverine? No, that was in the middle of the movie. Okay. Yeah. When he was flying just, backwards. Yeah, yeah. just so I, I, I don't know. I mean, start from start to finish, it's just like a lot of fun. Mark, what about you? Or something stood out to you? You know, one of the things that stood out to me was when we did Movie Talk the other day, seeing you gush about this movie, <laughs> seeing a good, morally-centered Canadian boy <laughs> love this movie, I thought it just might have been my violent, raunchy, American stylistic choices that would have loved this movie, but apparently internationally this thing's going to crush because it was so funny and it was so violent, but it worked for the story and the way that Tim Miller's directing moved this movie. It never stopped to take a breath. Yeah. You would be at the bar scene, which the bar reminded me of the hotel in John Wick a little bit. Sure, we just have all this collection yes, of that's what it was. Yeah. hanging out. And then when you, and if you notice when they have the Deadpool on the chalkboard, you saw names like Charlie Sheen, Bill Cosby, then Wade Wilson. <laughs> I thought everything about this, I didn't expect it to be, I, I wanted it to be funny and I knew from the billboards and the marketing campaign it would be hilarious. I didn't expect the jokes to be happening as often as they did. It was like I was watching a stand-up show because you get a new joke literally every 30 seconds. Watching the the way Deadpool interacts with everyone, from how he treats the X-Men to his blind roommate oh, to God. the villains. Yeah. Watching the superhero origin story, it's something that as comic book fans of movies that we are, we get so inundated with this is how this guy came to be and how this guy came to be. But seeing everything Deadpool went through, how you're not supposed to retain your sense of humor after going through all these trials that you have to, seeing him come out of that, that's his superpower. It's not just that he can heal himself and you can shoot him and it comes back to life and he regenerates magically, it's that he can laugh about it, and that's what the movie celebrated to me. I thought maybe my favorite part about the movie was the way it ended, because Colossus gives this speech about what it's like to be a true superhero, <laughs> what it's like to be an X-Man. This is why we want you on the team. And he listens to it, and then he just shoots Ed Grimes' head <laughs> off anyway. I thought it was brilliantly done. 
You know, one of the things for me, like, and you were, you mentioned it already, the thing about the romantic relationships. Do not like romantic relationships in these comic book movies. I mentioned this before. Twice I can think of that it kind of worked for me. Uh, uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, their relationship kind of worked for me in The Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, Tony Stark's and Pepper Potts. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that has kind of worked as well. But neither of those, and eh, Amazing Spider-Man, that was a core issue. When you meet these characters, you're thinking, this is going to be kind of forced, but that's fine. They're going to force a relationship here, and you're just going to stay on Deadpool loves this girl, and then we'll move on to the excitement, and it'll be fine. But they made me buy into that love relationship, you know? In that one scene that I think they released online in advance, I can't remember if they did or not, but when, you know, Ryan Reynolds is sitting there and says, like, look, my crazy and your crazy kind of fit together like pieces of a jigsaw it actually coalesced everything together perfectly. And when they went through that ridiculous time passage montage with the, diff- with the various holidays, by the time that was all set up, I bought into their love. I bought into the relationship. I bought into the emotional connection between the two so that when it came to the point that he was mad as hell, it's like, you took my girl, you felt his rage you felt his quest for vengeance and all that kind of stuff and and i absolutely love that the action the comedy the direction like look i gave this movie a 10 out of 10. i think it's the seventh film i've ever given a 10 out of 10 to but don't get me wrong i'm not saying that the movie was godfather i'm I'm like i'm not it is what it was and i don't know if everybody out there is going to come out and saying it was a 10 out of 10 but i Man, I have a hard time seeing many people coming out not smiling and having enjoyed themselves. Anyway, Christian, what about you? Some of the things that really stood out to you as positives from the film. The first thing that stood out to me was the fact that this was everything they promised they were giving us. Oh, my God, this yeah. Was everything. Do you remember we, we talked about that movie talk? That We talked about how the mar- the problem with the marketing campaign is being so good is that the movie can't <laughs> how possibly is it gonna deliver. And it delivered and okay. times 10. Oh, yes, it did. It delivered and everything. And I said to you right as we were walking out of the movie, I said, that is the most true adaptation yeah. I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, you did. From a comic book straight into a movie because that's Deadpool. And it was Ryan Reynolds going, I can't believe what those humps over at Fox did the first time with me and wrapped my face around. That's not going to happen this time. He told everybody, that won't happen. And it didn't. You got the murk with the mouth. You got the whole thing. And going off of that relationship that you guys are talking about, it could have easily felt into that cliche. She could have felt that yeah. cliche. And how good was she? She was amazing. Marina. And, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. and I be- and I believe that those two, like that's who Wade Wilson should be with. That's the girl. That's, yep. I bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. And I also liked that they didn't kill her. They mm-hmm. easily, they could have killed her and it could have just made it about him. Like, have just, that's all he's got now. I also love the tie-ins with the X-Men. I thought like, because the, to tie in a PG-13 franchise, which we all know, into this rated R world, and it didn't seem awkward at all. It no. seemed like it fit like a glove um, and not like an OJ glove, but a real glove. <laughs> and, and it also seemed like to me <laughs> that like, it's like, it's setting it up almost that he's going to be the new Wolverine of the franchise, like a different type of Wolverine to where he does. I love that. They keep trying to recruit him. He said, no, the moment I knew that he was going to shoot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, but, yeah, but, but, you're, still. but you're just waiting for it. You're yeah. waiting for him to. I, and I, I was laughing. I go, he's going to shoot him in the face. And then he does. And it's just that payoff. You're like, you know okay. what made that moment, though? It was Col- after he shoots the Colossus. Whoa! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then like, he throws, throws up. And he yeah. throws up. Mm-hmm. And was... That battle, by the way, that end battle with, and I like that Scrin a lot. Some people are giving Ed Scrin some crap. Um, I thought he was, I thought he was great as the villain. I thought Ed, he was a good villain. And that fight that he, that Deadpool and Ed Scrin were having up top, and then the battle with both Gina Carano, Colossus, and then what was the new girl? Megasonic, Megasonic teenage yeah. and that all worked. We essentially, like, ah, give me back to Deadpool. I didn't care. Where, show me whatever you want to show me because I was that into it. And that goes back to Tim Miller's uh, directing. I thought it was really good. Moved at a great pace. T.J. Miller, who I think sometimes for me is hit or miss, was great in this movie. Yeah. Fit the role tremendously. They're back and forth. That line of, uh, you know, I'd go with you, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> they had timing in it. And you can tell yeah. that everyone knew what this property was. And you could tell from, from just the, the back and forth and the, the, how, how funny it was because you can see them almost at the table throwing lines at one another and also saying, well, you know, Deadpool would probably say this. It wasn't, they weren't just throwing it out there like, well, this would be funny. They threw it out there because that's what Deadpool would say. And they also did what they, the, the way that, it, I don't know, it just, it was, it was that tone, the gratuitous violence for me worked. It yeah. worked because <laughs> that's what this maniac would do and the reason why. So I, I, I love this film. Uh, for myself, I think it's the best comic book, comic book movie that I've seen. No, that's and a good way to say it. One, yeah. of the, one of the reasons I say it like that is because when you're reading a comic book, sometimes you're in their thoughts. And this broke the fourth wall in such an original way that it made 
going back and forth between time from his origin to seeing when just the way he was able to drop in and tell you what's happening going back and forth with him fighting on, on that bridge to then you see the little Wolverine origins thing and then you see you know like yeah. they they did these uh kind of really innovative uh things that if you read it just on the script you would be like wow that's going to be hard to get over but because of the fourth wall breaking it just was a connective fiber and because it was funny it had you laughing through scenes as we move through time it was one of the most original yeah. takes i've seen in a comic book movie hell it was funny and i mean it works on all cylinders it's firing on all cylinders i felt like from the very beginning like you mentioned the credit sequence incredibly well directed by tim miller all the way to the very end with a little ferris bueller like tribute at the very end credits everything about this movie i agreed with john it's a 10 out of 10 for me it's a fantastic comic book movie and i you know every time we talk about it my cheeks start to hurt because hmm. i laughed so much during that entire film that when we talk about it, I was like, oh, yeah, I had a permagrin the entire movie. It's such a funny film. I had the same feeling, too. My cheeks were actually in pain when I was leaving. Yeah, and yeah. I think we all would have been happy if we left the theater saying, man, it was really funny. There was a lot of good violent action in there. And that was good enough. It would, maybe it was a little fluffy, but it wasn't fluffy. And you guys touched on it. It's because <clears throat> even though Ryan Reynolds' character, Wade Wilson, doesn't necessarily have, he's got a weird code of chivalry, even before he turns into Deadpool, where right. he's not a good dude necessarily. He's almost like a suicide squad where he's taking out worse guys than him mm. and he's helping out people who need it but you for some reason you root for him you're pulling for this guy right from the get-go so it would have been fine to see deadpool it was just a fun character to watch but because we were all so behind him that made when he broke the fourth wall so intriguing because it's like we're on his team and then all the jokes too that that the the ones that are meta that talking and referencing like the one about like oh I'm gonna take you to see Professor X oh which one McAvoy or right. Stewart one right. of the, the best moments yeah. of those, the movie those things are hilarious and when he goes to the X mansion he's like it's almost like you you know the student you're the only of, two that live yeah. here yeah, that was, exactly that, see I like that line the best yeah Victoria. so yeah. all those things were like all kind of like inside jokes but it was Deadpool's inside joke to us the viewer yeah. and the audience which is something we've never seen before and right. I'm so confused I, 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 what do I think about 20th century Fox now because yeah. what was the yeah. last movie they put out Fantastic where it just Four. felt like nothing but just meddling <laughs> but this and stuff. This is, uh, they seem to have a good hold on the X-Men franchise and this is part of the X-Men universe. And like, even you would read stuff about how maybe they were pushing back against Deadpool initially where it's like well we don't want to give it an R right. rating but well, somebody came in and said just take the reins off and let right. them make the movie they want to and you're right Christian it so fit in with the PG-13 see, franchise. See, I'm going to go back to John's point here. I don't think that they were ever there was ever a pushback on, on the rated R. I think that they once once the pitch came from like Miller mm. and Reynolds they knew I think that part, that part of the marketing the beginning marketing was oh there's a pushback because it starts a little bit of a conversation so I, I tend to agree with, with John I, I that think too. initially there was then they got the script so? oh, and they're like okay we need to do it all tell you what we got screwed out of because of the press uh, screening is that apparently there are two post-credits I know, scenes. and we only got to see one. <laughs> we only got to see one. So, so we saw the Ferris Bueller one. We saw the one, Ferris Bueller right. one. This is an X1 one, apparently. Now, now, by the time you guys... We're actually recording this on Wednesday. Right. So by the time you guys see this, we will have seen the second uh, post credit right. scene. So let's pretend for a second that we've seen the post... Uh, it was the awesome. second post... Oh. Schnepp, what do you think about the second <laughs> that, uh, post credit scene? Deadpool announced that Cable will be in the second Deadpool. Amazing. I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was, I, I thought yeah. the best part was when Hugh Jackman showed up as right, Wolverine, right. and yeah. then they said Deadpool, and then the next sequel is going to be Deadpool versus Wolverine. The announcement mm. of an X-Force trilogy is just so <laughs> exciting. I, li I liked when Deadpool killed the Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah. that, that was good. Although, I think it was you, Dennis, who said this thing. You know what would have made that one end credit scene, the Ferris Bueller? other thing even better is if you had Deadpool after he says go home go home and turns around and closes the door but it grabs the door and opens it and there was a bathroom at the end of the hall and he opens the door and there's Hugh Jackman just sitting on the toilet going what are you, what? What are you doing you know you, you bring that up I was waiting for the actual Hugh Jackman to pop so in is some I. capacity it makes sense that he doesn't I mean like it, Wolverine Origins was was not a good movie everybody can't acknowledge that but I get why he doesn't want to be in a movie that is so on the nose making fun but, of that but no I see he's gonna be, I think he's gonna be in, in another or worse, the, the X-Men more of the X-Men will because this movie obviously they played on the joke of the low budget and everything mm -hmm. too we already know that we're getting a sequel um it'll be a bigger budget for the sequel too and we'll get more x-men in it as well too because i think this is a great addition to the x-men universe i mean this is a great this is this is something uh, x-men right now is doing it right anyway i mean yeah. between first class and now days of future past and apocalypse coming out that storyline's coming out great but the question is how fox was going to do more uh, expanded universe in, in in you know excuse me the more shared universe in the film how are they going to do it 
this is how you do it. Now, here's the thing, too. We joked before, and, and, and I suggested it, but I didn't really think it could work. It's like how, by having Deadpool be rated R, <clears throat> you are potentially limiting his crossover availability into X-Men films because he's so rated R. And we joked, well, you can have him come into an X-Men movie, and he exclusively breaks the fourth wall, and when he's doing his swearing, you, you beep it, right? And at the time... I thought, yeah, that's when we could do it. But even my own head, I'm like, uh, that wouldn't really work. I'm pretty much convinced now it would work. Sure, yeah. I now, I've, after seeing this movie, I'm convinced that the audience knows this character and it could potentially actually fit and work. I think you're more flexible Deadpool now than you were before. I yeah. mean, also because the character is going to be aware that you're beeping him out. So he can actually yes. be yelling at studio executives yeah. and stuff like that. Like Everything that we're aware of as an audience, Deadpool is also aware of. And I agree with Christian's point where you didn't need to inject new life into the X-Men franchise because it's already crushing it. Yeah. But if you're losing a huge piece eventually and Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, this is the guy that breathes fresh life into your roster. Well, think about it. I mean, think about the next, after Apocalypse, wherever the story might go, and they go back to current times, and they need someone with that flair. I think people are going to accept Deadpool like as yeah. as the guy, because <clears throat> whether or not they recast Wolverine or whatever they do, we already know now that this, this guy is full of personality. He'll He's as vicious and violent as Wolverine, if not more so. Um, so I think that this was a brilliant move to, to introduce him. Now they really, I think it's a good move that, it, well, I don't know if it's officially been pushed, but Gambit, let's rework that. A little bit and get it because that th this can really piece it all together if they get Gambit working. This can help Gambit. They don't think they can take yeah. the budget down from Gambit. Right. I mean, 150 that's the, yes. million to 50 million. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. the whole whole yeah. reason why they could do all this stuff with Deadpool is because the budget was so mm -hmm. low. The this, risk was small. Yeah, if, if this was like a hundred million <clears throat> plus, no way right. they'd, be, they'd be like, no, not our rated R. It's PG thirteen. No, you can't do that. You can't joke about that. You can't. I mean, think about how many like un PC stuff. That, that was in this the whole movie. movie. Yeah, it's like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. what about that joke? You know, he has this blind uh, 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 woman, old woman, as his roommate, and like the baby hand. Yeah, yeah. And oh, then also, yeah. oh my god, it's going to feel huge in yeah, this yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Farts in her face well, while they drive by. Having, having said that, let's let's go around the table. Let's, we talked about how funny the film was, how many jokes there were. Let's talk about some of our favorite. Mm -hmm. Favorite jokes. I'll start with one of them. It involves the. I keep forgetting what is the name of the roommate. The, the Al. One, Al. Yeah. With Al. Leslie well, I thought. By the way, we talked about the great chemistry they developed with, between Ryan and Marina. But in a short period of time, they got me buying into this relationship yeah. between Al and Deadpool too. When he's leaving, he was already said he loves her. And as he's leaving, he says, "By the way, if I don't come back, <laughs> I want you to know that somewhere hidden in this apartment are five <laughs> keys of cocaine." And the cure to blindness. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. And All that and then them arguing about the furniture, which furniture to get, and what yeah. tells oh, you not to get. She's building the, the IKEA. IKEA. I told you we don't want the Lubenschwab. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff was so good because he could just go from being so concerned about Vanessa to this ridiculous conversation with Al, and you buy it and be but, equally as passionate about yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, that was what were you? What some of the famous well, favorite lines? Th that stuff for sure. But I think that again, I mentioned uh, T.J. Miller with the uh, not wanting to go. So um, I think that the sex scene was hysterical. Like all, oh my God. all that Women's stuff. Day. The, all the of it. pegging. I, I, Where it all goes. Like the entire thing from start to finish. And then he's just like, no. No, no. Do you know we're going to see an X Men movie where a girl slaps on a strap on and fucks one of the male characters right? up the ass? Like when that, like what? You, would, you would never believe that Fox would okay yeah, that. No that's way they would okay right? that. Unbelievable that they were able to do they, this. They probably didn't even know about it. They probably watched it like when the movie, when they saw the final cut right. or something. Yeah. And then it closed up on Ryan Reynolds' face. No. No. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> You know, also, I love that you get a hint of it from the trailers, and then when you see the movie, it's how it opens, and then they call back to it later, is when he's riding in the taxi cab, and he gave advice to the kid, oh, yeah. and then God. the kid ends up putting yeah. someone in the trunk, and he's right. like, yeah, no, don't kill her. Kill her. Yeah. yeah. It's, I oh, did God, not tell so you to do funny. that. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You let him me. go right away. I love how demented he is. I yeah. love how demented he <laughs> is. Kill the, the, the one that killed me was the, the kill him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that just killed What about you, Schnepp? Some of your favorite. Uh, I love his interactions with Colossus in uh, Teenage yeah. Oh, Sonic so Warhead. Good. I just liked how he just instantly was able to, like, Peg her and be like, "Oh, that's right. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, be that goth girl and you know, calling her, you know, Sinead O'Connor and just, <laughs> just some of the the back and forth and especially with Colossus, I I thought it really worked and it definitely feeds into them being able to do an X Force, an X Force. It doesn't have to be a, P, a R, I don't think, but it wouldn't hurt it if it was a 
if it was PG-13 or R, an X-4, is obviously Deadpool 2 has to be yeah. an R. We're in that world now. But. Oh, you, you can't change directions yeah, on Deadpool right. now. You can't. Mm -hmm. You could have maybe. I still think there, there's a reality in which they could have done a Deadpool PG-13, and it could have worked out fine. Not like this, though. Not like no, this, though. No. But then, And then you could have gone and said, hey, that worked. Now let's go into the hard R. You cannot start like this and then go right. back to PG-13 no. for a Deadpool You know, we were mentioning Fox earlier and like <clears> how it's like, I think the, that people think this is a Marvel film and Fox yeah. is totally cool with that because mm -hmm. because the way this is playing in, it's not like Fantastic Four at all. And I think the way people are, oh, I can't wait to see that new, uh, is Captain America going to be in this? Right. They're like, no, 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 this isn't Marvel, this is Fox. But Fox is like, hey, we're right. cool with that. And he even throws a Sam up, Jackson reference yeah, in there, too. Throw it, oh, yeah, we're yeah. good. No, you know? But that brings up a question. I got to ask, I have never asked anybody this question yet. And uh, let me ask you guys, was that the freaking wreckage of the helicarrier yes. that they were fighting out at the yes, end? Yes, it was. It looked mm -hmm. like it. It sure it looked like it. Was. I, I mean, I didn't see yeah. helicarrier blades, but they it was clearly an aircraft carrier of some sort yeah. that was wrecked. <laughs> So I mean, they didn't have any shield need, logos, but that was a which means you could do without Marvel's approval. <clears throat> yeah. Like you yeah. could slip in an yeah. X Men. Oh damn it! Now I got to go see this yeah, movie see again. again. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna see it anyway. What yeah, about yeah, you, Mark? What's some of the funniest jokes in the in the film? For uh, you? you know, watching him interact with T.J. Miller too. Like when they were in the bar after he has this horrific transformation to his face and he takes his hood off, and seeing T.J. Miller be so honest yet <laughs> try to be a friend, but also like, no, seriously, I can't look at this anymore. It just killed me watching every every person that he interacted with. Whether it was the touching moments with Vanessa or his roommate or TJ or even the villain, it just worked for me watching Ryan Reynolds' sense of humor, which he's had since his entire career yeah. started, even with you know two guys and a girl. He was always quick witted. This is he was born to play this role. Mm -hmm. Dennis, uh, I mean, I mentioned a couple of them before with the the self referential stuff with uh, Patrick Stewart and McAvoy, and then mm -hmm. the, the stuff with the baby hand when he's like <laughs> like rubbing it on Al's yeah. face, and then he talks so. about like jerking it later and how big it is it's gonna feel in this hand. Yeah, yeah that's pretty funny and then at the very end uh when he reveals his his face to vanessa and, and he has the hugh jackman oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, picture that was on there. great right. that was hilarious There's that one yeah. staple on his chin yeah that like, please pull that off yeah. so and I all the call out you were you, you like you brought up the opening credits yeah. just as soon as you see the, like he's the sexiest person alive and then later <laughs> hugh jackman it, the, his issue of sexiest people alive just how on the nose it was with humor that actually transcends the movie and is in the real world i thought it did it brilliantly. well that whole scene in the beginning that you know that the, when they, they released that leaked footage uh right what a year and a half ago when we got that entire scene to basically open the movie that will let anyone know who doesn't know what they're what they're in for that's this movie like mm -hmm. everything with the, the amount of violence you get the amount of jokes that you get in it when he's counting down the bullets and he right. like all that stuff like I, and then when he finally and then you see and ed's crying shows up like oh he's gonna take him out already and then you start to go tim miller's direction of going back into the origin story he sets you up immediately of this is everything this movie will be for the next two hours. And you remember who it was It was written by, I think, the real heroes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. funny. The real heroes. Uh, what was, I can't remember the exact wording of the joke, where, but he's sitting up at that bridge. It's that, it's that scene yeah. that we see there. He says, some of you might be wondering, how did I finally get my own movie? Will it involve giving fellatio to somebody whose name rhymes with Mulverine? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes yeah. on it. That was just so good. Um, look, if we're going to talk about negatives, I've got one that, and it's a little bit of a nitpick, to, yeah. to be honest, but I, they never really, the movie never laid out for me, okay, so who are these bad guys? What's the organization? We're turning you into a super slave. Okay, but for what purpose and to what end and who's involved and what's going on? Like, all this kind of stuff. I felt they could have done a little bit better of a job with that. That's all I got. That is all I got. I got Minutia also. <laughs> um, I also had the same thing that you just said in regards to, I would have liked to know a little bit more about that organization. I actually think, and Mark and I talked about this as well too, I'm a big fan of Gina Carano too, but you can tell they cut around her a lot with, with her acting. They didn't give her much to say at all. She's her fighting scenes are great, but whenever she, you get, she's just not she's just not tuned in as an actress. I and would take that a step further because I think we could have gotten more background about this organization if it wasn't for her. If they didn't have to, I yeah, mean, it just felt it, like, like there's a couple times it's like they cut away early, like she's about to say something. Yeah, may, maybe so. And and there was and there's one other scene it was when Deadpool finally gets the courage to go find Vanessa in the strip club, and he and then he but then he walks away, yet nobody's watching her. And it's like you, you know you're there. You know this guy's after her. Like why why aren't you paying? Like why isn't T.J. Miller paying a lot of attention to her? They're just kind of like 
just, he's distracted by all the boobs. Yeah, and it's just a, it's just a matter of you, that. that Stan one, Lee is there in his best yeah. cameo. That that's what's was it. the that was greatest best cameo, cameo ever. ever. But they yeah, just, and he comes seemed, back and says some more stuff. He did, so. but they just seemed that they needed to further the plot there, and it just needed to do it anyway. Small thing. Do uh, you got any negatives? I got no? none. I don't yeah. know what's wrong with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, I mean, that's something you and me talked about. It's minor. I mean, nothing that takes away. But I mean, I felt like. After they kind of showed you how Deadpool became to be with his powers and then how he didn't see Vanessa, uh, we didn't really get that feeling of Vanessa missing Wade Wilson. That kind of like, because later, you know, when she realizes that he's alive, she's like pissed, right? Yeah. But we never see that, that trend, you know, her. She's not going, miserable. Yeah, we don't no. see her depression, her like, up, like, I'm assuming she just thinks either he ditched her and then went off and died. Or, or, you know, he just, I don't know, was faking his cancer or something like that and took off. I don't know exactly what she was thinking. I thought that part could have been done better. I mean, I mean it, look, look, if you're waiting tables in a strip club, in that strip club, you're probably not the happiest of people. <laughs> like, it, you know, but I, I was saying for me personally, I, I just agree with the, the Carano stuff kind of bugged me but it's all little little things yeah. is it, there's nothing that i saw that i was like oh that's terrible why they put that in there there's a couple jokes that they keep calling back but i like the fact that the jokes were flying that fast and furious at us so i can't complain about that what did I'll colossus give... say when her when her breast fell out he's like Yo, oh that was your fun. flower what did yeah. he say yeah, something like that right. so, um the one other thing i'll say that maybe they could have done this is even a negative it's really something they could have maybe done a bit better they did such a magnificent job with their, and some movies struggle with the whole notion of passage of time. They did such a great job in illustrating passage of time with the relationship between, like, showing the, them having sex through the different mm -hmm. seasons. And you, as an audience member, totally got it. Okay, they've been in a relationship now for like a year. What they didn't do well, though, was the passage of time from when Wade left her to when the final battle happens. Because I honestly, at, at first I didn't know, okay, so has a week passed? Has uh, a month passed? And then I think by the end they kind of mentioned that maybe it's been closer to a year yeah. Yeah. that he's been off on this on this revenge rampage. And I felt, okay, probably could have done a little bit better of a yeah. job letting me as an audience member go along for that ride and feel like that time has passed. But again, it's a nitpick. Yeah, I think, sure. I think a, Deadpool was, yeah. wanted to get his face back. Like he was, like, he was still stuck on like they can change me back. So that yeah. right. that's what like at least it didn't bother me that he's like before he goes back to Vanessa, he's like I want to get back to who I was because she won't yeah. accept me as this hideous thing. So it really works on that like almost like Phantom of the Opera, right. Dark Man yeah. type of element. That yeah. all that stuff's call. there that is really like it's originally uh, it's an original take on that material. Yeah, it was a little like snidely whiplash. You just like like kidnap Vanessa and then just have her up here on the top of this whatever the hovercraft and like wait for Deadpool to come when you damn well know Deadpool can just keep regenerating. He's going to keep coming after you. So I think that character would have gone ahead and killed Vanessa, but it's such a little nitpicky thing and I thought Ed Skrine actually was the perfect villain for a movie like this where you don't need a villain to take up so much screen time. You just need a menacing presence in the background because we are going to put the focus on Deadpool. And I think that torture scene actually helped with this character. Yeah. When oh, he's my, torturing yes. uh, Wade Wilson and trying to turn him into Deadpool, that was frightening. Right. At least someone right. from me like who's claustrophobic and like, I'm like oh, <laughs> so this is how you're going to torture him? That sounds terrible. Yeah, that, that shit Kill was not now. funny. That's Kill not, me there now. were moments. I mean, it's really <laughs> funny throughout the entire film, but there are moments of like emotionality yeah. with his relationship. Relationship, yeah. and then those torture scenes are horrifying. They're the not suffocation funny. stuff. Oh, was it, I was rough. squirming yeah. in yeah. my seat as a guy who's dreamed of having mutant powers multiple times. If that's how you get them, I think you're out. <laughs> you're, you're out. out. Get it. Yeah. Although, yeah. Is, wasn't that a little bit of a retcon? Because everything they've done said in the X Men universe so far is that if you have the mutant gene, it starts to manifest itself around puberty or mm -hmm. teenage. And, and but that. So I guess they're changing that in the X-Men universe now. It's like, no, you can have that as an adult. It just hasn't triggered. You know, right. John, they're and making new discoveries all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Through torture. Um, all right. Well, listen, let's let's wrap this thing up by ascribing some scores. Dennis, let's start with you down there. Zero to ten, what do you give Deadpool? Uh, I'm going to give it a nine. Uh, I, I thought it was fun. It was a blast. I think, you know, I think the next one, I actually hope they don't, give them too much money to do the next one we we obviously want better you know more characters and maybe like uh, i mean i thought the visual effects were good for for the budget but th they were probably going to upgrade that but i don't want them to give them too much money because i feel like then that's when the studio is gonna be like yeah. oh no no you can't do that you keep it under 100 million it. yeah exactly um but it was refreshing especially we're so used to all these superhero movies that are like it's the end of the world it's the end of the world and we've gotten 
some lately with Deadpool and with Ant Man, where no, it's not the end of the world. It's much more of a personal story. Mm-hmm. And I kind of saving that, the girl, saving yeah, the, yeah, saving the, the daughter, the father, daughter. Yeah. So I thought that was one of the strong points for it. I'm going to go, I like being very specific with my decimals. I'm going to go 9.2 out of 10. If you have to round it down to 9, I feel like you're doing the movie a disservice because this movie, not only... Do that, Dennis? You're giving no, it a disservice. It sets the it's, weird Dennis, <laughs> it's weird that Dennis did it a disservice, yeah. according to <laughs> Alice. giving it a so 9. I see after, all the comments. You and Dennis hated the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you guys like each nine. other? Dennis and Els hate each other. Yeah. Well, Dennis just farted in the face of Deadpool and said, drive by. <laughs> yeah. I am going to go 9.2 because not only did this movie set the bar so high, for a year that's filled with potentially great comic book movies. It also is by far the funniest comedy, and it's the one to beat this year. You hear me ride along too? Zoolander <laughs> too. Deadpool was so much funnier than you guys, and you guys had one job to do. Deadpool had so many jobs, and it knocked every one of them out of the stadium, and in large part because there's a guy playing Deadpool who so cares about the material, who's so immersed in it, was born to play this role. It's rare that you get to see a movie where you can take somebody that, that is so famous that you know them for their personality put them in a movie and say no that's that's wade wilson that's not ryan reynolds that's wade wilson and he's making fun of us himself the x-men everything the way this movie fit into its larger universe embraced its own universe i thought was so well done i cannot wait for you guys to see deadpool again and again with all of us um yeah i i hardly ever 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 give tens but but based on my emotional experience in there the, the ride that that movie took me on and how it hit and impacted me, I had to give it a 10. I, I, like, I have not walked out of the theater that thoroughly entertained since I saw the first Avengers movie at the, at the first press screening. Like I literally, Wendy will tell you, I came out, I, I was like shaking yeah. and, and lamenting the fact that I had to wait a week to see it again. <laughs> um, now, I don't know that it's going to be a 10 for you. Maybe it'll be a 7 for you or an 8, but I do really wholeheartedly believe you are going to enjoy this movie when you see it. You hear that, Ashley? You're going to like this movie mm-hmm. when you see it. <laughs> We're filming yeah. right she now, hasn't Ashley. Seen it. Just come walking she still in. Still hasn't seen uh, it. She hasn't seen it yet. But I mean, I, it might be Nate for you, might, whatever. I really do think you're going to enjoy it, though. For me, it was on that level. It hit me in such a way that it was just ecstasy. For me, it's a ten. Well, I think if you score this nine point two, you fail at life. Um, <laughs> for me, for me, I'm going to go nine point five. Uh, I I think that this is actually what Mark said. The way that it fits into the We're universe. We're done. We're done. <laughs> the uh, the comedy, the directing, the way that you can take a superhero movie, spin it on its head, make it so original, make it so fun. Like the fact that the jokes do work, and that could have failed miserably. To do that many jokes throughout two hours, and to keep making it fresh and funny and make it serve the story because you're absolutely right. There are a lot of emotional moments as well too that again could have just been joke, joke, joke. Oh, and then in the, there, he's in the middle of this this terrifying scene that he could have thrown in some more jokes and it would have been like, well, wait a minute, what's he doing here? Right. But when he was cracking jokes, I bought it. So everything was just done very well. It was done with care. It was yeah. done with love. You could tell that, yes, they were making fun of the audience, but they were also giving it to the audience and saying, look, this is a brand new thing. Enjoy this and enjoy this character. Yeah, I like what you said. I mean, the stakes are real, even though it's incredibly funny. You actually feel that there are real stakes, yeah. even though he's cracking jokes and he's making and he's letting you know that, well, hey, wait a minute, he survived all this. Eventually, he's going to be in, at the end of this film. Everything works out. Um, I think if you give it a 9.5, you just really don't understand superhero <laughs> films. <laughs> I'm giving it a ten, motherfuckers. What's up, son? Uh, it's it, like I, I think it's one of the the greatest comic book films to ever be made, and it's one of the funniest comic book films to ever be made. I enjoyed it thoroughly from beginning to end. I now appreciate all those insane, weird, sweaty nerds dressed up as Deadpool's mm-hmm. at all those conventions because I keep seeing more of them every convention I'm at. There's like fifty of them now, all yelling like, "Whoa!" Like you know, like ruining pictures and taking Darth Vader's helmet and running around mm-hmm. and. Female Deadpool. Now it makes sense to me to see all of these Deadpools, especially when they get this film. Right. They've got something to rally around. And I think when you see it, you're going to rally around this film and probably see it more than once in the theater. This is a film for me that I at least at the very least I'm going to see three times in the theater because it's that enjoyable for repeat viewing. And we talked about a lot of the, the spoilery jokes in there. We barely scratched the surface. There's so many inside yeah. Easter eggs and jokes and people are laughing while Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is just laying off a whole series of just funny jokes, one after the other. So honestly, a 10 for me. It's a fantastic film. 
Well, there you go, guys. You got a 9, a 9.2, a 9.5, and two tens. Let us know what you thought of Deadpool. Jump into the comments section below. Leave some of your favorite moments from the film, and what would you give Deadpool out of 10? So that'll do it for myself, Dennis, Mark, Christian, and Schnepp. Special thanks to Jonathan behind the camera making all run, and for Ashley nearly ruining our shoot. <laughs> and thanks to you guys for joining us. So uh, for Collider Video, bye-bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.